Welcome to Zafes National Conference. And my name is uh, Reverend Henry Mukonda, pastor from Kitwe Evangelical Church in Kitwe. Um, the task that I have to do this time is to present to you what sometimes is known as the theology of work. But basically it is to do with uh, Christians who are in particular professions and how they can become agents or missionaries in the work of God. May I begin by introducing the subject itself. The theology of work has always been confused with the theology of sin and the effect of it. God gave the mandate to, to be fruitful, to fill the earth and subdue it, and to have dominion over everything before the fall of man. In other words, work was given first before man sinned. That's Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28 following. And obviously Genesis chapter 3 uh, verse 17 to 19 is the curse and the result of which comes out of that. Work should then be considered as a blessing to showcase your skills, to showcase your abilities, a way of life in which we should live by and be able to produce what needs to be produced. Work actually should be understood as ministry to God and to humanity because God is a working God and if we work, it means we are reflecting the glory of God and he is at work in us and for him to be at work in us, he is dealing with lives of people and we are dealing with lives of people in the way that we are going to work. So, talking about professionals in missions, we are considering the idea of professions or workers, how they can get involved in missions. I like to give, for example, descriptions of works or words. For example, what does the idea of mission mean? men. Maybe we need to be specific, particularly Christian missions. It is always to be understood in the pool of form, in the sense that it is missions, not mission. In Exodus chapter 31, verses 1 to 3, which is the text that I want to use for this presentation, we are told of God setting apart somebody by the name of Bezabel to come and do the work of craftsmanship. But God said something very interesting. He will fill him with his spirit to do all kinds of skills. That is verse 4 and 5. And we see these crafts as abilities to do certain things. They are not one, but several activities. The Christian mission, therefore, is the ability to transform a person, to transform a community, and even a nation to the glory of God. This includes, obviously, salvation, which is the cause and effect of that particular transformation that we are talking about. This is the use of the skills or crafts that you have to change a particular community or to transform a community. In the use of our today's language, this is the idea of using your profession to change or transform a community, to transform a life, to transform a people. In the words of a man known as Robert Frost, he says, As our two eyes see or make a single object, so should our work and spirituality present to us one image to the world. This is important to take note of in the sense that you, you begin as a Christian teacher, for example, a Christian engineer, a Christian so and so, that which you are as a Christian and the profession that you do are put together so that you are a Christian teacher, a Christian nurse, a Christian doctor, a Christian so and so on. 
Take note of the following as far as that is concerned. The Christian mission must always bring not just change, but much more transformation. There's actually a difference between a change and transformation. Change is just to substitute one thing for the other, whereas transformation is a profound change of the form, structure, and inward change of the nature and character of the thing that was there. This is what the gospel should do in the lives of people. This is possible with profession, professionals that are in the word of God. So that as they work, for example, in a classroom as a teacher, you go there as a Christian teacher, you will not just help the children to know how to read and write, but you transform their character so that they begin to behave differently and they begin to behave in the rightful way. But secondly, the thing to note is that Christian mission is about people. It is not just about what they get, but people, not just human beings that are not there, but human beings that are both spiritual and physical. People need schools, yes. People need hospitals, people need banks, people need all kinds of places where professionals work. But in those places, there are people that are found there. We need to build relationships with them. And we know very well the Lord Jesus Christ is dealing with people, but he's building relationships with them. For instance, when he calls his disciples, he's calling them, come and I will make you into fishers of men. In that making of fishers of men, he is not going to tell them how to throw a net, but how to relate with people so that these people begin to know them. So in these schools, in these banks, in these hospitals, in these places that you are going to go, particularly those of us that have done engineering courses, you are going to go into industry where there will be a lot of things that you'll be involved in. But you are going in as a Christian engineer. You'll be working on the roads as a Christian engineer so that you are careful as to what you are putting in. The second thing that I want to talk about, I've talked about missions there, but um, I've talked about missions, but I want to talk about why missions. The why question is to find the purpose. The reason we are filled with the Holy Spirit is that we may be enabled to save God better. The text that we read in, Genesis, in, in Exodus chapter 31, when God calls this particular person, Bazela, the son of Uri, he says, I'm going to fill him with the Spirit of God, with ability and intelligence, with knowledge and all craftsmanship, why? So that he qualifies. You are in training right now. A number of you are in colleges. And the way you are in training, you are being shaped. But thanks be to God, you are Christian young men and women. And you are being filled by the Spirit of God through the ministry of Zaphis. And with this, you are going to go into the world, what we call the world on the field, as a transformed people a people that are going to bring a change or a transformation to their community. We are created for that reason that there must be change. I like what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. Our gifts are given so that they are used for the common good, but much more to save one another to save God, to express our abilities that we are filled by the Spirit of God. That's where the idea of professionalism comes in. You are not just a teacher who breaks chalk, but you are going to touch the lives of people. You are a tool of evangelism that God is placing in that particular school. You are a tool of evangelism that God is placing in that industry. You are a tool of evangelism that is going to be put in the bank. 
so that you are able to reach and tell the people how great this God is, who has enabled you, because the Spirit of God enables people to do greater things. Other people are going to say, how do you manage? It is because of how God has filled you with his Spirit to enable you to do over and above what everybody else is doing. But service is work. It is usually important to know that as I save, I am touching lives of people to make them better. You are going to go to a community where maybe they may not know how to use the bank. But as the first banker there, as the first nurse there, as the first teacher there, you begin to help them to live better. We must work in such a way that we make a change in the lives of people. The, the reason Bazela was called was because of him to articulate the crafts that God was going to give him. You may, you may be surprised as I say these things, but every Christian must have a kind, some kind of professional that he should have. Every Christian must be a worker to display the work of God. For example, in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 26, we are told that. In Proverbs chapter 26, verse 13 to 16, we are told not to be lazy. We are told how lazy people be behave. Lazy people behave in such a way that they are like a hinge of the door. The door opens and passes through the same way over and over, but it doesn't move anywhere. Another example of lazy people is are those that, that sleep and just turn on one bed and the other side and the other side, and actually there's nothing concrete they are doing. But a worker is the one that is going to bring change. So uh, a worker is one who is going to bring in change. I, let me go back to Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 13. The sluggard says, there is a lion in the road. There is a lion in the streets. Why? He doesn't want to go that street. As the door turns on its hinges, verse 14, so does the sluggard in his bed. The sluggard buries his head in the dish and wears him out to bring back it into his mouth. The sluggard is wiser than his own, in his own eyes than the seven men who can answer discreetly. In other words, every Christian must work, must have a profession so that he is not counted among the lazy. But thirdly, service is honorable. Usually people would ask, I won't bench you, what does it do? If you do not work, it may be difficult for you to get the honor that you expect. For example, when you go and look for a house for rent, they are going to ask you, where do you work? To know whether you are going to manage. Even when you want to go and marry, <laughs> young men, people, they are going to ask you, do you work before you can marry our daughter? It is a point of being honored, being respected, being identified. So the quality of service that we give is very important. And I'm concerned, those of us that have passed through Zafes, I must confess, when we have gone into industry, we've been honored in our churches because our service has been different from the way those that have not passed through Zafes have been. You must be a person that knows how to serve in that particular profession in which God has called you. Enjoy your work. Be attractive to others so that they may begin to ask, how come you love to do what you do? And you can easily tell them, God has blessed me with this work. That's why I put all my energies in. That's why I do what I do to the glory of God. It is an honor to save. And it is because of the idea of the fact that when you're a professional, you are working. How, does miss, how should missions be done? This is now to do with methods. In my view, methods is where you, you get the, right, the wrong thing and put it right. 
where everybody says, go and preach, and they preach from all over. But the method is for how are you going to preach as a professional Christ Christian? You will not just preach by asking people, sit down, turn to Matthew chapter, but your life will display that. But let me go through a number of verses that are going to help us on how we should save in our professions. What should remain the same is the message, not the method. In 1 Corinthians, for example, 2 Corinthians, rather, chapter 11, verse 14, and Galatians chapter 1, the writer says, the message should not change. And the message we know is that Jesus Christ and him crucified, that we are all sinners and we need to be saved, that we have no other God but the living God, and we can only come to him through our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. But in Philippians chapter 1, verse 15 to 18, there are methods that have been outlined there. The methods in which Christ should be presented to others. Let me be quick at this point to point out professionals in Christian min missions. The church has suffered in many years because of div division between the clergy and the late. Between those that are trained and those that are not trained, between those that wear collars and call themselves pastor, bishop, reverend, everything, I'm one of those, and those who do not have any title, the former view as, they are, as if they are the owners of everything, whereas the latter appear as if they are just support team. My friend, you're a teacher, you're a nurse, whatever profession you are, as you go into industry, you are not a supportive team alone. You are an agent of change. You are a team. You are the one to work. And in working with others, build relationships. So my concern really is relationship building so that people begin to ask, why does he behave differently? Why does he relate with people differently? The second thing that you should do, it is not just to relate well with people, but to know the truth, to understand the word of God, to, to make a difference in the way you present. By the way, be ready. Some of you are going to go into places where you'll be the highly educated person. And because you're the highly educated person there, and you're starting work there, they'll ask you to pray. You know, they'll know that you know how to pray a Christian man. The next time, they'll ask you to preach. And if you have not trained yourself to preach, your knees will begin shaking. You don't know what to say. But when you train yourself, as a professional Christian leader, you'll be able to stand and present the gospel well. You know what? For example, teachers have a lot of influence in the communities they go in. But what more, when you go in as a Christian teacher and you know how to explain the scriptures well. You know, in the Bible we are told of Apollos and the Aquila. They were, sh they were tent makers. Well, the Apostle Paul came. He joined them and they began to work with the Apostle Paul. And they began to present the gospel in the manner in which the Apostle Paul was able to present. They presented Jesus Christ. There are areas, of course, where they felt like, ah, he, this is too much. The Apostle Paul says it better. They consulted. But the big thing I'm trying to point out here is that even as tent makers, they presented the gospel with accuracy. You and me that are going to go into the field who are in school must explain the gospel well. So number one, you create good relationships with people. Number three, 
two you is carried by non-trained people or non-educated people it is those who just know how to read the bible they don't know how to use a commentary they don't know how to use a dictionary they don't know how to use other tools that they can use to prepare themselves as they present the gospel but for you be sharp be quick be a person that is going to say well i know i am not a preacher man i'm not a pastor i'm not a reverend i'm not a clergy but i should know how to use this too to use that too i should know a few things that will make me different to preach the gospel in that way the gospel is going to be understood and be applied in the lives of people finally as i come to, to an end why should these things be done it is because of the number of people that need to be reached with the gospel there are so many people that are still lost that need to be reached with the gospel not all pastors will reach those places but you engineers are going to reach those places but not only that it is because of the craftness of the world the world has affected literally everything sin has affected literally everything oh dear friends the gospel must also affect everything about man it doesn't matter what profession you are you are an agent of god to reach out but apart from that you may say i may not know how to preach but there's something you can do to reach out fund those who know how to preach be involved financially change lives of young people that come to a scripture union meeting that go for a zafes meeting give them something help them you'll be speaking louder than a preacher man as you reach out to them as a professional christian you'll be counseling them you'll be directing them you'll be speaking to them the good news by way of you helping them with money or things that they are lacking do you know that there are some people that do not even have exercise books as they go to school let alone a pair of shoes as they go to school and this because of your love as a christian you drop this in their hands you know what they are going to praise the lord they are going to say thank god there was a teacher there was a banker there was a, a nurse there was a, this kind of christian man or woman who helped me some of them even a meal is going to go a long way and as we put all these th things together you know what is going to happen we are going to transform the lives of people inside out we are going to transform their understanding of what christianity is all about we are going to transform their knowledge of how they sh they should live because many times we feel christianity is just going to sit in a church and forgetting but look how corrupt the world has become even our nation it is because we have understood christianity is the one outside there but when we do a good job wherever we are our two eyes the christian eye and a non-christian eye they should view things in the same way our spiritual lives must not be compromised because of our career you may you, because of what you do you may spend a lot of your time at work but that is your mission field for you to reach out to those people because you may not have time to be meeting with others in church in this ministry dear friends we need to be involved all of us particularly those of you that are young and you have this great opportunity to touch lives of other people you know with your degree with your certificate with your diploma as you go into the world people will be looking up to you and let them see jesus in the way you say let them understand to say there's a god in heaven who has touched such a life and has brought a change it is in the way you are going to save it is in the way you are going to relate to them i've talked about money a little bit 
But let me just finish up with that. As you get involved in ministry, be effective in your local assembly. Be effective in your local assembly. Because missions has a base, and the base is a church. Use your money well. Spend your money to support ministries, even like Surface, like Scripture Union. These ministries need our support. There are a lot of people, let me just digress a little bit. There are a lot of people in the parts of the world that have traveled who have dedicated themselves to supporting such ministries. And I was shocked when I went to Ghana. There is a huge building like the way we see Findeco House in Lusaka. And guess what is on top there? Scripture Union House. Wow! And the excitement that just came to me. And it's Christians that put their money together to put up that building. It's being rented out. The scripture Union Ghana is, is very powerful. But talk about Zambia Fellowship of Evangelical Students. In our time, we used to say, a task as huge as an elephant. But because we are there, we can be able to move. It is exciting for me to come to a meeting like this, where I have young men and women that are involved in Zafes, and the, there are thousands upon thousands, if not millions in this country, that have had no opportunity like the one that you have. Go spend your energies as a missionary sent out by God to save him wherever you, you, you will be. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Amen.